Good afternoon. Good afternoon. There we go. What a joy it is to see all of your smiling faces, even behind the mask. We have waited for so long for an opportunity to gather in person and to experience art done by the greatest artists, which are the youngest among us. What a joy it is for Witherspoon to host this afternoon's celebration of the arts. My name is Dr. Harrison Jones. I am honored to serve as the chairman of the board for the Asante Art Institute of Indianapolis, as well as the pastor of Witherspoon Presbyterian Church. I think being here on this afternoon is joint for many ways. A, both institutions have weathered the COVID-19 pandemic. Both are committed to arts and to arts learning, arts education, and arts as a means to inspire and to liberate our communities. Both did not accept defeat last year and were able to pivot. And your being here tonight is a testament to the pivot spirit that exists within the Asante Art Institute. With our founding artistic director at the helm, our executive team led by Mrs. Keisha Dixon and her staff, and your trust in us. What we see tonight is a testimony of what happens when community can come together, when we can find our way through even the toughest storms, and when we always choose to invest and invest wisely. And so I'm honored to bring to the forefront tonight our founding artistic director, who will offer welcoming words. Please put your hands together and welcome Miss Deborah Asante. Thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you, Dr. Jones. I am so honored and just filled with a, a sense of accomplishment that we are here. We were supposed to be at Arts for Lawrence on this day, and there was a sudden change of plans. They, they're postponing their opening. But we were able, with the help of Witherspoon, to come together and still make this happen. Because our young artists have been working hard, and they deserve to be seen. They, they deserve to have their, artists, their art witnessed. Now, I'm going to bring up the teaching teams of each performance piece that we're doing. This is the, the, the final product of two workshops. It's storytelling time and hip hop, be, uh, hip hop, tick tock, let your body speak. <laughs> Before I do that, I wanna to say to everyone here, 
what Dr. Jones was saying is that we have risen to the occasion. We have continued to work. And we are trying our hardest to get connected to children who are in need of this programming. The very uh, circumstance of our, our struggle, this pandemic, makes it hard to reach out and touch each other. So recruitment, we have all these programs going on and we're struggling to make sure that, that young people, young artists know about it. In any way that you can help us or advise us on uh, ways of connecting with young artists because my heart aches every time a program goes up and we have just a trickling of, of young artists involved because there's so many children out there that need to connect with themselves. This is a place for self-discovery, for them to understand their worth. All the violence that is happening, the tragedy of losing that young child, the, because nobody has connected with these children out there who don't understand how important they are and what they can do in this world. And it just needs somebody sitting beside them to say, hey, are you listening to this? Do you understand how to connect with something that's going to impact you? So we really want to get the word out there. We, we have uh, summer pro, uh, partners that we're working with. Freetown Village is still accepting people, and our artists will go there to their summer camp and uh, work with them a couple of days a week. Horizons, uh, New Horizons, and Lillian Davis. Those are partners that are, are accepting students still and that you can connect with the Asante engine. Okay, and also I have auditions for Freedom Church, The Liberation of Soul, which is a project that we are partnered with Connor Prairie on. And it's a big one. And those auditions are coming up the first week in June. So I'd like to get the word out for that. Now, are you ready? I, I took care of that business. Now, I would like to bring up the two teaching artists that headed its storytelling time. Put your hands together for Alicia Sims and Corey e Ewing. There should be another mic. Anybody know it? Oh, yeah, okay. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. We are so excited to be here. Thank you, Asante, for allowing us this wonderful opportunity to be with these phenomenal artists. Even through Zoom, it was exciting to come in here today and actually see them in person. I was like, oh, they don't have a screen around them. They look wonderful. <laughs> so it was an exciting experience. Yes, it was. So uh, I'm Corey Ewing. Uh, this was my first program with the theater. Um, I was very nervous going into it, very worried about it. But it really panned out um, excellently with our students that we had. So as we were doing the program, we kind of stuck with the beginning, the middle, and the end of a story. So we started off, we had a little, we had a few more students than what we ended up with, and we kind of got to know them. Um, and we talked about what a story is and developed everything from there. In the middle of that, they got to find their own stories. A lot of it talking through parents and family members, some making up their own as we went. And so today it'll be really cool to see how, these, how the story of his storytelling time ends and culminates today. And we have full confidence in all of them and the treat they're going to give you in just a few minutes. Absolutely. We started off going through the recipe of storytelling, and so they learned that. And just a second ago, we ended up asking them what was one of the things they learned. And the three things that they shared with us is that, one, performing arts can be something they, they can take for the rest of their lives. Two, that you don't have to be afraid to speak in front of an audience and that there are always people around you to support you. And then last but not least, that there are always different types of ways to tell stories and you can embed acting. So without further ado, we are excited <laughs> to bring up the three students that remained in the program the entire time to share their stories with you. And we'll start off with Mr. Diedrich, it's storytelling time. Hey. 
Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Deidre Dickerson, as Mr. Yun has just told y'all. But anyways, let's get to the story. So, Dan had, um, he lived um, in Chicago, and um, he had a mother who was a local but talented family. So, he invited her to his school for a black history presentation about families and um, family history. First, Darren's mother talked about um, how important and how valuable he is. And then second, she talked about sacrifice and how important it is throughout your life. So let's get started, shall we? Darren's fourth great-grandfather, Jeremiah, was born in the 1830s in Alabama, which was going through um, a lot of growth at the time. He grew up to be, become a very strong man <laughs> due to um, sharecropping. So he married a beautiful, light-skinned woman named Mary who had beautiful, long, brown hair who had freckles. Um, which, in my opinion, are cute for a girl, if you ask me. <laughs> Anyways, back to the story. Um, Jeremiah and Mary had a son named Harwell, and they figured, why? So, more kids equals um, easier work, right, for, in the farm. So, guess how many kids Harwell had? He had 14 kids. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot, isn't it? So, one of them was named Arthur, and Arthur, and Arthur married a really tall woman named Ella. And guess how tall Ella was? Six feet and two inches tall. That's really tall for a woman, right? Also, Arthur and Ella had eight kids in um, 20 years. So one of them was Gilbert, who wanted to do anything, and I mean anything, but sharecropping. He did not like sharecropping. In fact, he kind of hated it. He did not want to do it anymore. So despite being in Alabama for all of his life and considering it his home and loving his family, he and his wife Lula got caught up in the Great Migration and moved to Chicago. And they moved to Chicago for a better life. And they could have stayed, but they were willing to sacrifice in order to a better life, which is good. So, Gilbert had a son named James, who worked for Ebony Magazine, which was flourishing um, in the 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, you know. And... Um, <laughs> Well, James worked for Ebony for, almost, for like 41 years, which is a long time, right? And so James um, had a daughter named Cheryl, and um, growing up around Ebony publishing offices, she wanted to become a fashion designer, and that was her dream. And then um, when she was a young woman, she met her future husband, Don, and had Darren. So Cheryl had to um, sacrifice and put a hold or, or put aside her dreams in order um, to take care of her family, which is um, a good thing. And also you, would, you have to put um, either your family or someone else first and then put yourself next. That's what Darren learned, and he really liked um, his, mo his mother's sorry, presentation. And he learned um, sacrifice and um, how important his dreams are and not giving up on them no matter what. And that's my story, guys. I hope you like it. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Next, we have Kennedy. Hello.
Hello, everybody. So today I'm going to be telling you a story. So let's get started. OK, so once upon a time, there was a girl named Emma. And Emma was a very curious girl. I mean, she liked to dig in boxes and explore when she wasn't supposed to. And she was just bad. Anyway. <laughs> So one day, she was helping her grandparents clean out their basement, and she saw this huge rectangular prism in the corner covered with a black sheet. She's like, what is this thing? So she pulled the cover off of it, and it was like a time machine. And she saw the door, and she saw the knobs on it. So she pressed the button, and the time machine opened, she stepped inside, and there was three buttons. One button said 70s, 80s, and 90s. So she pressed the 60s, and then she, the time machine rumbled, and it started going. And then when she went, when the time machine stopped, everything looked totally different. I mean, there were like kids playing outside. No kids were inside playing video games. They were playing jacks, hopscotch, all that stuff. Then a girl with a pink dress and white heels popped up and was like, hi, what, what's your name? Oh, I'm Emma, uh, nice to meet you. Where am I? You're in the 60s, honey, you'll get used to it. Okay, so I'm just gonna show you around and yeah. So when she, she showed the girl around, first thing she showed her was the black and white TV. And she's like, what's this thing? And she said, it's called a TV, sweetheart. <laughs> and so why, why is it black and white, though? Because we don't have all that color technology. I don't know how you people get that stuff, but whatever. Anyway, so look, it's just the TV. Let's move on. The next thing I'm going to show you is the park. Have you ever been to a park before? Is this a new thing? No, no, it's not. I've been to a park before. OK, whatever. OK, so she saw, showed her the kids playing jump rope and everything like that. OK, you can go now. Bye. Rude. Then she pressed the time machine button and went to the 80s. And when she got to the 80s, she saw the same girl, but she had like different clothing on. So she popped up again. Hi, remember me? Yeah, why are you here? I work double shift, sweetheart. Okay. Okay. Now, the first thing I'm going to show you is the TV. I thought you already showed me the TV, but this is a little different. So here's the TV. Um, where's your remote at? Sweetie, we don't have remotes. you got to go up to the TV, turn the channel. So sorry about that. If you lazy, I don't care. But <laughs> yeah. So next, I'm going to show you this thing. What is this thing? It's called a payphone. You put the quarter in, dial the number, ring, ring. Okay. Okay. Um, got it. Now, wait. Then she looked up at the time. Oh no, it's twelve seventeen. I gotta get back to the time machine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, do you know where the bus stop is? Yeah, there's one down the street. Then come on. Okay, um, sir, can we please have a ride? Uh, is, isn't that my job? I mean, do you not see the big bus? Duh. Okay, enough with the attitude. Here's your money. Let's go. <laughs> mm. Speed up, dude. We don't got all day. Okay, okay, jeez. <laughs> okay, we made it. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. Okay, thanks for the ride. Whatever. <laughs> One thing before you go, sweetheart. 
write me some few postcards and everything. No, goodbye. <laughs> then she got back home. Then she saw her grandpa standing outside of the time machine looking like this. Were you in my old time machine? Yes, sir. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't mean it. Uh, is it broke or uh, I'm sorry? Good job. You fixed it. Thank you. The end. Yes. Wonderful job, Kennedy. And last but not least, we have the lovely... Emery. <laughs> Once upon a time, there was a girl named Emery who found a pattern rainbow with three unicorns guarding it. She asked them if she could go over the rainbow, and they asked, why do you want to go? And, and, and she asked, because, her fr because my friends said when, I went, when they went over the rainbow a few years ago, they, they went over the rainbow and saw a and saw a land named after them and whatever they wanted. So they, so they, so then Emery slid over the rainbow and when she got over there, guess what she found? A land of, a land of whatever she wanted and it was all hers. The, the, uh, the people that were there, they looked like her. They had blonde hair, and they had weird-looking shirts that were pink and, and row ugly on them. And for some reason, they liked that kind of shirt. So, so then she, so then she saw a Ferris wheel, and she saw a pickle stand and a lemonade stand, and she went. So first she went to, the, and first she went to the first game she saw, which was the How fast can you eat a chicken? And and she beat her own self, and she was so excited. Then she went to the pickle store and bought a thousand pickles with one dollar. <laughs> then she, finally she played an arcade game that she won, and she was so good at it, and she got the biggest high score, which was 2019, and she, and she won a thousand tickets, which equaled a thousand dollars, and she went back home smiling from ear to ear. The next morning, she went back to the rainbow, and she saw, and she, she did not see the unicorns, so she went back home. But when, as soon as she touched the door, the unicorns appeared and said, oh, we're not morning people, sorry. <laughs> then, then she slid back over the rainbow, and Guess what she found? She found a place where um, all ghosts live, and she was so mad. So she, so she told the rain to. She told the unicorns, "Why did you trick me? I believed you. What?" Then she, then they all laughed. 
The first unicorn said with a soft voice, I can't believe they tricked you. The second unicorn said with a gruff and gruff voice, We tricked you. I can't believe you believed us. The third unicorn said with a, with a squeaky voice, We tricked you. I can't believe you believed us. You are so stupid. The end. Thank you so much. As you can see, the personalities of all three of them came through their stories. We had a wonderful time. I'm so proud of each and every one of you, and thank you so much for working with us. Without further ado, we are going to hand it over to Josh and Erica. Thank you. Can we give it up for storytelling time one more time? What? Yeah. That was amazing. I, I thoroughly enjoy storytelling, so that melted my heart. But, man, what in the world? What's up? <laughs> TikTok, hip-hop, hip-hop, TikTok, hip-hop, let your body finish it. There it is. <laughs> Man, we got to talk about briefly about our experience with this virtual experience. Um, I'll go first very quickly. Yeah, uh, just because I have the microphone, I guess that makes sense. Uh, first thing I want to say is I've never taught dancing before, for real. I've danced my whole life, and I love to dance, but I've never taught it before. So when the opportunity came to, you know, get groovy, I was a little anxious one, because I've never taught it. Two, it's through virtual Zoom, so that's just awkward. But it was an extremely fun experience, and um, I feel like all of us kind of walked away with something great. And just kind of confidence in ourselves and, I don't know, some type of liberation. Yeah, man. I'm going to let you go. Okay. Thank you. Um, yeah, I 100% agree that it, it can be a little weird to teach anything over Zoom, but especially dance, which is something that requires, you know, your whole body to be in the frame so that all of the artists can see what the movement is. Um, and I have been only once a student of dance on Zoom, and it is hard. So the amount of work and attention to detail that they um, put in and were committed to is remarkable and excellent. And so you should all be very proud of them you guys should all be very proud of yourselves. Um, but yeah, it was an awesome experience. We had six sessions together, as well as two Friday night dance parties where we just had fun and some of the families danced. Um, and it was a great time. And so we are excited now to show you the culmination. Um, this piece was choreographed by Josh and me and all of the students. So there is a section of our dance created by your artists. And it's to a song called Ball and Flossin. Nuff said. Thank you. All right, guys, come on up here.
Thank you. Give it up for them again. Woo! Thank you so much. Now, I believe our executive director, Ms. Keisha Dixon, is going to grace us with some comments. Yeah. Yes, it does. Hello, everyone, and so good for you to come out this afternoon and spend your time supporting the Asante Art Institute of Indianapolis and our Prep for Life program. Thank you so much. And to all of you who have signed on live on Facebook, we appreciate you being here at Witherspoon Presbyterian Church. Now, we would not be able to do this type of work without the support of the community. For those of you who do not have a program, we want to thank Alan Whitehill Clues, the Andrew W. Mellon Foundation, Arts Council of Indianapolis and the City of Indianapolis, Arts Midwest, and the National Endowment of the Arts. I must say for that grant, we were one of three organizations in the state of Indiana and one of 33 who received federal funding. Central Indiana Community Foundation, we appreciate their support, as well as the Crystal DeHaan Family Foundation. The Department of Child Services also supports our work. We are a prevention provider. And the Indiana Arts Commission, the Glick Fund, always supports the Prep for Life program, especially when we do work on the east side of the city. Special thanks to the National Association of Black Storytellers. Special thanks to the National Association of Black Storytellers. This organization has been around for over 35 years, and we are a member of that organization. Deborah Asante and I are both members, and I am the co-chair for the youth committee and the festival committee. So I want to say the reason that we're doing storytelling is because it's part of our oral tradition of keeping our stories alive. It is our responsibility to tell our stories. So that is why we are emphasizing storytelling. And we ask you to continue to tell stories to the young ones. We ask the young ones to always ask questions so that you can get information. Special thanks to Theater at the Fort. The parents, all the parents of our Prep for Life students that are here today, stand up so we can acknowledge you, please. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. For you to support their work in a virtual arena during a pandemic. That's phenomenal. And they have risen to the occasion. I am so proud of all of you young ones and I'm proud of the, the directors, the facilitators that work with them because that is a stretch. We have schools and teachers that are saying how difficult it is and yet you were able to come through. So I applaud you and I applaud the parents who insisted that you could honor your commitment and follow through with the work. Last but not least, we want to say thank you to Witherspoon Presbyterian Church. Reverend Jones always steps up in his capacity as the pastor here. So we are very grateful to him for always lending a hand. And as our board president, he has a vision for this institution that has carried us to where we are now and made sure that we stay on track. We ask you to consider being donors. While it looks like we get a lot of grant money, this grant money is gonna run out. Okay, the grant money will run out and we will be looking to the community to help financially support the organization. The work has to continue. This is healing and we all know that our children need that, our families need that. I've heard a lot of organizations say, ooh, we had to close our doors, ooh, we had to stop our programming. 
We didn't have a chance to do that. Not one minute. We have been working, 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 working continuously to make sure that there was some opportunity for engagement for our young people and our families. While Ms. Asante said a few came, enough came. And those that did, they benefited greatly because of the talents and skills of our team of teaching artists and because of the artistic direction of Deborah Asante. So I thank you all again for coming, and I hope you have a wonderful afternoon. You may not have to go home, but you got to get out of here. Give yourselves a round of applause, and thank you again. One more thing. Amber, stand up. Stand up. Amber Daniel used to be in, in Academy when she was 12 years old, and now she's come back and is an employee. She's an, my assistant. And we were up late last night, this morning, doing some work dealing with details, and she hung in there. So I wanna acknowledge her publicly for doing all of the work that she does behind the scenes, because we who work behind the scenes don't get that call out. So Amber, thank you so much. Thank you very much. <laughs> Miss Makeda Lance is in the back. She did the temperatures. Thank you so much. <laughs> and Terrence Asante Doyle is the assistant to the artistic director. Thank you for your work as well. And now, y'all get up out of here. Bye.